Okay, hi there. Third not all game, we're going to look at Mikhail Tal versus Anatoly Karpov. It's a blitz game. Don't take it too seriously. It was in 1987. Headaches easing off, having water. <clears throat> okay, so I've had a quick preview of this game. Um, looks like a hack attack. So, um, right. Remember, it's a blitz game, though, yeah? So there might have been uh, much better defences, etc. So e4. Solid Karakhan. How is that going to be weakened? c4. This is quite a nice move against the Karakhan. Because uh, it changes away from the solid nature, just a slight, slightly away from the solid nature. Um, okay. So d5. Is White going to end up with an isolated queen's pawn here? He does. Look, isolated queen's pawn. Are you all very worried about this isolated queen's pawn? Or do you think there's enough compensation? Uh, so knight c3, knight f3. Okay, it's not an isolated queen's pawn now. Knight takes c3. Look, he's repair, repairing Tal's pawn structure. Instead, we've just got potentially hanging pawns if White ever does c4. Hanging pawns. It's kind of Grunfeldish, you know. Maybe some pressure on on here. Maybe maybe these light squares are blockadable later. You know, we might we might get a rook on the C file and, and try and blockade. Yeah, restrain, blockade, destroy Nimzovich. Yeah. Um. So maybe that's why you know Karpov decided to go for this structure. Okay. So Bishop D3. There's no C5 to worry. White. There's no C pawn. That's good news. Uh, so castles, castles. Knight c6. Maybe Black's evilly preparing e5 instead to try and you know weaken this center. So rookie one keeping hold of that e5 square. Rookie eight as if e5 might actually be played anyway. This battle of central squares. Okay, if you can control the center, that's the center of the battlefield. Your pieces have, you know, more magic, more independence. They can go anywhere from the center. So, is the white center about to be a meltdown here? Bishop g5 stopping e5. Okay. The central battle continues. So, bishop e6. Forget about playing e5. Just blockade on the light squares. Maybe rook c8. You know, maybe knight a5, knight to c4. Or bishop d5 maybe bang what rook takes e6 what on earth just as we, we were expecting a carpovian blockade on the light squares there's a rude interruption with rook e6 and this rook e6 you know echoes um it the echoes go as far back or even further throughout chess history you know, Lasker, Capablanca, he missed the chance on e6. There was some f7, e6 tactics when Capablanca would just ruthlessly outplay him because he had an isolated queen's pawn. If you don't use the dynamism, uh, you could get slaughtered um, structurally. But it's not to be the case here. There's no, no, no light square blockade. Give your opponent a time to do a light square blockade and then you sit to die. But if you don't want to sit and die, you play something like this. It, it fractures the diagonal. White's got the light square bishop. Black hasn't got a white square bishop counterpart. So we have the start of... Also, there's two pawns instead of three. Defending the king. Okay. So bishop c4. Immediate targets. The rook's also kind of misplaced. Queen e2. You've got build-up moves at your disposal to try and attack e6. So simple build-up moves. Passive piece already. Just carry on building up on e6. Okay. Knight d2. Knight d2. So maybe, just maybe knight e4 to c5 is on the cards. Or is there something else? Knight e4. Bishop b3. Okay, the knight's also protecting c3 rather usefully. And again, knight c5 might be on the cards. So e5, 
H4. H4. Look at this. H4 is just just gonna just gonna rip open the H file. He's letting his center melt down here. He just wants a bit of time to get to the Black King. Remember, he's got that powerful like square bishop in this position. So if he can tear open the H file, this is really dangerous. And in fact, you know, if there's like Bishop F6, you know, Black will be getting mated. Takes, takes, takes. That will be mate. There's no escape square. So he takes that pawn. Queen takes h5. Okay, what does queen h5 introduce? Um, maybe, you know, well, actually, the major threat, as well as bishop f7, is just queen takes rook. <laughs> so something has to be done about the rook <laughs> on a practical level. <laughs> Forget the more esoteric things here. What does black do about the rook? <laughs> Black has to defend the rook somehow. Okay, so he just moves it. Okay, now what? Is h7 weak? Um, can this bishop coordinate with the queen? This rook obviously can't be lifted because of the pawn. Forget that one. Or we can try and weaken the king position with bishop h6. Is that too slow? So what does Tau play here? Bishop c2. Ah. So he just has the threat now of knight f6. If the threat of knight f6 and h7 will be mating. Uh, so it stops d3 as well. You can just take. Okay. So that's a serious threat, knight f6. Would you agree? So queen e5. Now, is knight f6 here, is, the, is it not possible because of queen e1? So king h2... You would have knight there and you'd be attacking h7. So is this played? Is knight f6 played here? Is this very interesting? No, it's not played. Knight g3 is played instead. Wow. So knight g3 makes sure that if the king moves here, there's no check on e5 later. So he's still offering the rook. He's still attacking h7. So is, is Karpov going to take the rook now? He does. But how is he going to defend h7? Wow. Is he going to play h6? Maybe he just takes. We'll see. h6 takes. So we've still got a lot of attacking pieces here. We've, we've got enough, you know, to make the black king. Um, we've got a knight ready to pounce. At the moment it's just defensive on this diagonal to stop any pesky checks from e5 so king g8 takes strips open the king so if king takes it will be just mate in two wouldn't it queen g6 check king moves queen h7 mate so rook takes f2 right check only one move. Now, can he cheekily use this diagonal? I wonder if this diagonal is going to be used for getting the game. Um, what's going to be the killer blow here? If you did play queen g6, you might be concerned about the king crawling out, maybe groveling over the queen side. Um, what do you guys think here? I'll test your tactics. How would you continue the attack if I gave you 20 seconds starting from here? What move would you play? Everyone's saying Queen G6. Queen G6. Okay. Okay. That looks actually quite convincing to kick the king back. All right. I wonder what Tal played. He did play to Queen G6. So he's got the king where he wants the king. And now... Ah. Mate in two. Mate next move. On G7. The king's going to be forced to move and then slaughter. Okay. All right. So that that was interesting. So the knockout blow there, it, it seems to be um, involving this this rookie six. Just so Karpov couldn't get his light square blockade. Um, so it's a bit naughty, isn't it? How you know Karpov wanted to play serious, boring positional chess, but it was rudely interrupted by this um, this rookie six. Bang. Yeah. 
so there's a, there's a point about rookie one to play be able to play rookie six. Um, it was a blitz game, yeah. So it seems that um, the, the king was just stripped with this h pawn attack, and um, a rook sack, you know, as as you do. Uh, just just to make sure you've got time for your for your h7 attack, and then it all gets a bit desperate. Yeah, mating. Okay. Um, all right, I'm going to save that and maybe uh, find 